slipping back towards the flat line here, down slightly. Our news call is underway right now. We're monitoring that. In the meantime, let's bring in Third Bridge analyst Jamie Lumley. Jamie, want to get your thoughts on the results we got here? Because at first glance, it does seem like uh, this beat was very much driven by the cost cutting we've seen at the company. Uh, and, and there's a lot, a lot of mixed results uh, if you parse through some of these different segments. There certainly is a lot to unpack, and I think there are a couple areas to first take a look at. One is, of course, there's a lot of interest around streaming. How necessarily is that road to profitability going? And Disney is making a lot of process, uh, progress, trimming that loss, moving in the right direction. But then also seeing a couple of challenging things in different markets, seeing a major erosion of that international base uh, with Hotstar in India, and then also seeing flat to down across ESPN Plus and Hulu and Disney Plus in the U.S. markets. So definitely a couple of challenges there. But then for we're looking at a couple areas where there have been some positives within parks. One of the big stories of the summer has been the ongoing question of what exactly is attendance looking like. So far, in terms of revenue, it seems that they're able to still see growth over the previous year period and get some encouragement from that. And then, of course, looking over at the linear business, which has been a major discussion and concerning around what sort of role this will play for the business going forward. While it is continuing to face pressure with that 7% decline across both domestic and international uh, channels, uh, it's not that double-digit losses that they were seeing at the beginning of the year. So some encouraging signs there as well. Yeah, I do want to dig into Parks uh, a little bit more, though, because it does seem like some of the some of the strength, the top line growth we've seen, particularly on the domestic side in Parks, that that does seem to be slowing. And more notably, operating income actually fell 13 percent year on year. This has been an area of strength and profitability for Disney, and it's enabled them to, to pull, pull that lever to help sustain the streaming business and some of the other efforts that are afoot at the company. Does this change things? It's definitely a good question, and certainly looking at that business, the overall questions have been okay. Looking at the price increases that Disney put in place for its parks, what the, would the response be when it comes to foot traffic? And then also overall, how does that cost structure change with the ongoing impacts of inflation and dealing with that on top of the numerous investments that Disney has been making into this portion of the business? Certainly, it's interesting to look at this segment in comparison with, say, Comcast Universal to understand what necessarily is happening with foot traffic, because there are, of course, some other macro economic trends here, such as changing leisure habit behavior as we start to ease out of that pent-up uh, post-COVID demand, which was uh, seeing huge numbers of uh, people attending parks in that initial period. As that starts to wane and people start to consider necessarily where they want their leisure dollars to be going, that's another thing to keep in mind here. As you pointed out, operating income from parks is under pressure, and whether or not they're going to be able to move out of this at Disney as they continue to look towards what necessarily is the flexibility around pricing and getting those parks up to full capacity is a big question. Yeah. When do you think streaming actually reaches profitability? And I ask that because it does seem like the losses are narrowing, but there's still a ways to go. And there's still questions about some of the other entities like Hulu, which uh, there is a belief out there they're going to acquire the, the remaining stake from Comcast for before the year is out. Absolutely. So there are a couple of key things to look at here. One is Hulu, which you definitely mentioned, with that upcoming option to buy the remaining stake from Comcast, which, considering the minimum of almost $30 billion for that valuation for Hulu, is definitely going to be a big decision to make. Uh, but from what we've been hearing overall in this streaming segment is that that 2024 expectation, which Bob Iger has talked about for profitability, is increasingly looking to be challenging. We have the ongoing dual strike in Hollywood, which has stopped all production of any new content made in the U.S which will make it hard to necessarily pull more users to uh, Disney's various platforms. And then also just some of these overall harder trends about overall slowdown in subscriber growth domestically and some challenges overseas as well. So from what we've been hearing from experts, it's more likely that 2025 is when Disney could start to see profitability in streaming. But there are a number of things in flux here as the total effect of the strikes uh, remains to be seen. And then also overall how effective the cost-cutting measures will be when trying to also manage the line of being able to see subscribers not trail off dramatically in the coming months.